What's going on everybody? UCF Jaguar back here with GenJag.com and in this video I want to go over the top four Jaguars that are entering their contract years. Now what a contract year is, it is essentially the last year on a player's current contract before they turn into an unrestricted free agent and then that's when the bidding begins to be able to employ these guys for their services. So a contract year is essentially the most important year of a player's career. Now there could be multiple contract years, kind of like Calais Campbell, he's on his second big money contract, but uh, in this video we're going to go over the top four Jaguars that need to have big years to be able to get their big paydays. So let's get it. Now the first player we will talk about is Jaguars defensive end Dante Fowler Jr. Now Dante Fowler was a number three overall pick by the Jaguars in the 2015 NFL Draft and unfortunately his rookie season was derailed due to an ACL tear in a rookie minicamp. One of the worst days I can remember in the last five to ten years as a Jaguars fan as it is extremely devastating to hear that your first round pick towards ACL and their first practice as a Jaguar but uh, he came back in his second season and he didn't do too too hot I mean he only had four sacks as he was kind of learning how to be a pass rusher that's kind of tends to happen with a player when uh, like Dante Fowler when he was at Florida he was basically a rover they lined him up everywhere on the field and he was able to go in there and make plays just because he was a physical specimen however once you get to the NFL level you really had to work on your pass rushing technique as you're going against top offensive linemen a bunch of professionals and you have to be able to have pass rushing moves yet to be able to use your hands just because in 2016 Dante Fowler was just spinning into nothing but in the offseason of 2017 he really did a lot of work to refine his pass rushing t mechanics as he was able to come up with eight sacks after only having four sacks in the 2016 season now Dante Fowler he had eight sacks in 2017 and he added on three sacks in the postseason Dante Fowler is a third down specialist he comes in there when obvious passing situations come about you pair up Yannick Ngakwe on one side and Dante Fowler Jr. on the other and they're able to go in there and uh, wreak some habit now Dante Fowler even though he had the ACL tear in, in 2015 he has been able to stay relatively healthy and his two seasons that he did play 2016 and 2017 he hasn't missed a game due to injury so he has been healthy of course right now he is on the physically unable to perform list to start a training camp so we'll see how that develops later on but uh, when it comes to Dante Fowler this offseason a big thing happened with him where the Jaguars declined his fifth year option and usually when that happens history shows that they don't usually get another contract after that and when you ask me if I think Dante Fowler will get another deal I don't think that he will just because we drafted a defensive end in the 2016 NFL draft in the third round by the name of Yannick Ngakwe and Ngakwe has turned out to be one of the better young pass rushing defensive ends in the NFL I mean that dude reeks have it he has he gets sacks he gets strip sacks and he is going to ultimately make Dante Fowler expendable now when you give me a list of players that we need to be able to free up the books to resign you know, 1A, 1B has to be Jalen Ramsey and Yannick Ngakwe. I mean, you do everything that you can to re-sign these guys. You got to cut players. You make sure that these guys stay on the Jaguars in the long term and you don't let another team uh, get get control over these guys. Number two, I have Miles Jack. And number three comes Dante Fowler Jr. Now, good defensive ends are hard to come by. And Dante Fowler will, will probably be able to price himself out of the Jaguars. I mean, you look around the NFL... You have teams like the New York Jets, Indianapolis Colts, teams that are loaded with crap room that don't really have much of a defensive end. So, I mean, they could come in and bring a Dante Fowler Jr. and that will be their premier guy. Uh, Dante Fowler Jr., he is a he's a big piece. He's also a luxury tool to be able to have a really good backup in there, a third down specialist. So, I just think Dante Fowler Jr. will be able to outprice us. Now, next we have wide receiver Dante Moncrief. Now, Dante Moncrief is his first First year on the Jaguars he signed a one-year 9.6 million dollar deal and Dante Moncrief is a kind of player that really teases you with his physical ability I mean his attributes he's 6'2 220 pounds 
Um, however, in his NFL career, he's been kind of hampered by both injuries and just inconsistent quarterback play. If Andrew Luck isn't in there, he doesn't really do too well. In his four years as an Indianapolis Colts, he has just under 1,900 yards. Uh, but when it comes to him on the Jaguars, he's on a rented deal. He's on a one-year deal, and you know he has a kind of physical tool set that really only DJ Chark has. You know, he's a big wide receiver. He's kind of an alpha guy. Um, he can be that real X wide receiver, but I, you know, if he gets like 800 to 1200 yards this year, you know, stays healthy, he's going to probably be able to sign a big four or five year deal somewhere else. And I don't see the Jaguars re-signing him just because I think that they drafted DJ Chark to ultimately be his replacement and then that will give you four really good wide receivers that you have on the roster and uh, Dante Moncrief he's on that rented deal hopefully he can stay healthy hopefully he can have a big year but uh, you know I just think that he's on a rented deal with the Jaguars and I don't think that he's in the Jaguars long-term plans. Now next we will talk about running back TJ Yeldon. And now TJ Yeldon was drafted in the second round of the 2015 NFL Draft. He was actually a number 36 overall pick. And when it comes to TJ Yeldon, when you look at his draft spot, he was kind of a bust. I mean, when you draft somebody in the top 36 picks as a running back, you expect him to be a bell cow guy. However, TJ Yeldon hasn't really turned into that. However, I will say TJ Yellen, if you take if you take out his draft spot, he's a pretty nice piece to our team. Uh, he's a really good third down back. He started the year last year kind of on as a healthy scratch as Chris Ivory was kind of granted that active role. However, Chris Ivory had his fumbling problems. He really wasn't all that dynamic. And then TJ Yellen stepped in there and he was a really good player for us at the end of last season. Uh, you know, when when Leonard Fournette was was injured against the Colts, I mean, he went out and had a huge game. He also had a big game, like, in the playoffs. And uh, TJ Yeldon, he's a really good third down back just because he's very dependable. You know, he doesn't really fumble the ball. In 477 career touches, he only has four fumbles and two of those fumbles lost. So those are really good stats. He's also a really good pass catcher. You know, he can go in there on third downs and be able to supply Bortles with a check down in the flats if need be. And he's also a very good pass protector. So all those are really good attributes that you want in a third down or a third down running back, a you know number two guy. And you know, he looks to be in really good shape from when I saw him out at that one practice that I did go to. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, I mean, TJ Yellen, I could see him being a guy that could earn another contract with the Jaguars. I don't think he's going to be able to bit, get a big deal just because, um, you know, he's proven that he's not really a bell cow guy. He just doesn't really have the skill set to be able to do that. But, you know, he's a nice number two running back, and he's just a nice piece for the Jaguars offense to have. Now the fourth and last player that we will talk about is offensive guard AJ Can. Now in that 2015 NFL draft that we've been speaking about, he was the third round pick of that draft. Um, and with AJ Can, the story behind him is just he's been inconsistent. You know, he especially in like 2017. I mean, when you look at him, it seemed like you know one game he'd have a good game and the next game it'd be bad. And it was just he's just kind of an inconsistent player. However, I think 2018 will be a huge year for him to really decide what kind of contract that he gets. Just because if he plays really well, you know, I could see him getting a big money deal just because uh, he's a guy that, unlike a lot of offensive linemen, he's able to really stay healthy. In three seasons with the Jaguars, he's only missed three due to injury. And, you know, that's kind of rare when it comes to offensive linemen. Usually offensive linemen get injured a lot just because they're in the trenches. You know, you have players coming at their knees. Uh, you know, you have, they have big old, you know, muscles. I mean, they usually they're just prone to injuries. And uh, AJ Can, you know, he had the most snaps behind Blake Bortles of the team, of the offense last season. So um, AJ Can, if he can play consistent in 2018, if he can play really well, he could be, get a big money deal and he's actually been very very good at training camp this season so I mean AJ can we'll see what happens with him you know I'm not sure if we will be able to like re-sign him if he does really well because you know if you sign him to a pretty big deal all of a sudden you have four out of your five offensive starting offensive linemen on relatively big deals so uh, you know we'll see what happens with like Will Richardson and Jeremy Parnell on the right side of the offensive line 
But, you know, we'll see, you know, if AJ Can has a good year, he could potentially get a new contract with the Jaguars. Now that kind of wraps up our top four guys that are entering their contract year. Let me know who you guys feel we should re-sign. I'm pretty curious to know, um, you know, who you guys think should the Jaguars should make a priority to bring back and who you guys think wouldn't mind let walk. Now some players that are entering their contract years that I did not mention include offensive guard and center Tyler Shatley. Um, you have running back Corey Grant, uh, swing tackle Josh Wells, fullback Tommy Bohannon, kicker Josh Lambeau, wide receiver Rashad Green, and tight ends Ben Koyak and James O'Shaughnessy. So thank you guys all for watching my video. Go Jaguars. And this is UCF Jaguar with and we out.